It's good to have testimonies once in a while. Tell them what you told me by text. Do I have an hour? <laughs> Go back. <laughs> God bless you, everybody. So as I was telling Pastor Shaiju, there was something amazing that happened at work. So I've been working at RBC for about, um, at the department for about 10 months. And so I met this Catholic Italian, and she's a sweetheart, really a sweetheart. Her brother-in-law is a Pentecostal, no jewelry, no makeup for women, only skirts, etc., etc. So she's had a very negative experience, at least with that side of the family. So when she heard that I was Pentecostal, she was like, eh, stay away, please, like about religion. She loves me as a person, but she didn't want to hear anything. And I extended the invitation, praise God. Um, he gave me that opportunity. And I honestly left it in his hand. So I'm like, okay, Lord, you do your thing because I really don't feel it. And next thing I know, Sunday morning, we're in the back, the worship team. And uh, Lena, Sister Lena Trophy comes to me. And mind you, this lady came to Emmanuel. She lives two minutes away, okay? She remembered the address. She remembered the time. She came to Emmanuel. The first person that she sees is Sister Lena Trophy, who she worked with at RBC. Can you imagine? So Sister Lena brought her to the back, said, Sonia, come. I see Rosie. That's my friend's name from work. And uh, she stays in the service. I didn't see her. She left earlier. She tells me on Tuesday. I didn't see her Monday. She wasn't working. Tuesday, she comes and she tells me, okay, Sonia, I really love your church. And I go, okay. Well, sure. <laughs> and she says, I felt something so different. She says, I felt joy in that place. And I felt like people were free and it felt like home. And she says, and I, <laughs> I really loved Pastor She Joy's preaching. <laughs> so all, to, all that to say that her, her hardened to religion, Catholic heart, was touched by the Holy Spirit that day. And by God's grace, she'll be back in Jesus' name. Coming up to Easter, so, you know, we're all thinking about how can we reach out to friends, how can we reach out to family, how can we reach out to those whom we work with. And uh, where I teach, we have a Facebook group for each class. So I figured there's a perfect place to advertise the church and what's going on to try and promote it as much as possible. So I got on there and I started doing it. And sure enough, some students came and said, you know, we'd like to come to your church. So... One of my students ended up showing up on, uh, on the Sunday morning service, and he came and he brought his fiance. And they were so blessed by the service, not only blessed, but they gave their hearts to Jesus the first time they came into our church. Both him and his fiance. And so they said, we want to make your church our church. And he's going back to his work to ask for him to get every Sunday off so that way he can come to our church. And he's going to bring his parents as well. Good evening. I have a little, uh, be actually a beautiful, big story uh, about Easter. I had a coworker come uh, about a month ago. He crushed his hand. I don't know how he did it. I think he got his hand stuck on a door. And his fingers, uh, two or three of his fingers are crushed. And he's been working with a cast. And uh, he came here for Sunday. And then he wrote to me, actually, if anybody wants to see the pictures later, he showed me pictures. Um, <clears throat> he wrote to me and he goes, uh, praise God, this is amazing. He goes, my fingers started uh, moving again. And I'm like, wait a minute. And I'm writing back to him. I go, just to make sure, right? And I'm like, wait a minute. It wasn't moving before the service? He goes, no, I couldn't barely move them. He goes, during the service, they were tingling and they were moving. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. It's beautiful. When we, when we host the Holy Ghost, he does the most. Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. He does the most. God bless you all. All right. Um, uh, some of you may know that. Um, no, they don't. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, Kim and I have been married um, three years last month. This month. Right? And, um, <laughs> and uh, we, have, we have been um, trying to have a baby for two years now. We found out that um, uh, two months ago that uh, Kim is going to have a baby this October. Thank, uh, 
Praise God for that. I, I thank God. I, I really thank God because it's, it's a miracle. It's an it's a absolute miracle, though. So, um, praise God. And, and I hope this is an encouragement to other couples that uh, have also in the same position that we were in. We were like, trying and you're not seeing anything. Nothing is happening. And you're becoming discouraged every day because the tests say no. But God has a plan that you... He has a plan, though, that even though the doctors say no, the tests say no, though, but if once owing is God say yes once, and, and uh, everything is going to open up, though, for you. So I pray, praise God. Praise God. This is, I'm going to give you some powerful, powerful teaching from Second Timothy 1. And this is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave when I laid my hands on you. Okay. This is a powerful scripture. Fan into flames. Everybody say it out loud. Fan into flames. The gift of God. That you received. When I laid my hands on you. This is very interesting. In the initial, the first three words. This is why. I remind. So that means there is a reason why they were coming to that conclusion. So we need to find the reason. You want to know the reason? I, I, if you talk like this, we're going to sleep. Talk to me, somebody. Do you want to know the reason? Yes. Go to verse 4. As I remember your tears. Everybody say, as I remember your tears. Okay, now verse 5. I am reminded of your sincere faith. Number one. He said, I am reminded of what? Tears. Two, sincere faith. Okay. Okay. Then he comes to this verse. For this reason, I remind you, fan to flame. The gift of God, which is in you, through the laying of my hands. How many of you understand so far? Okay. So something that they received because of two things that he remembers. What are the two things? Tears and sincere faith. You need both. Look at a neighbor and say, you need both. Look at the other neighbor and say, we need both. Listen, I'm going to tell you, church, this church has to be a weeping church. Some people will say, oh, you don't have to be emotional. Well, you don't read your Bible properly because Jesus was an emotional being. He was open to emotion. In fact, Jesus was the most emotional man I've ever known because the Bible talks how quick Jesus was to tears. In fact, he wept in public. Every believer in our church must practice sincere faith along with tears. Why? Because the perfect author and finisher of faith was not ashamed to weep. And the reason why we cannot weep is because our hearts are no more hearts of flesh. Our hearts are hearts of stone. And Jesus says that uh, God says in the scripture in the Old Testament, says, I will take your heart of stone, and I will give you heart of flesh. You will see Jeremiah say, I wish my eyes were like a stream of water so I can lament for the daughter of Zion. I wish. He's saying, I desire that I can weep. We must desire to have tears because I'm telling you, a broken and contrite spirit is a key to heaven. I'm telling you this. This is a key. Are you you're listening with me tonight? You can go praying, 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 praying one hour. And then cry for two minutes. It'll be one hour of screaming will be equivalent to two minutes of broken heart. Brokenness is the key to the heart of God. So you can pray for one hour. Da, 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 God, do that. God, do this. God, 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 God. It may not even take off. But you have a broken and contrite spirit. Jesus wailed in public. Imagine he's standing in the market and he cries out. It wasn't even a meeting. <laughs> people have a problem with people crying in the meeting. 
People have a problem with people crying themselves and throwing themselves down in the presence of God on a Wednesday night. Jesus did that in public. Jesus, when he prayed, he threw himself on the ground. That's how your master prayed. Don't pray cute prayers. Pray prayers that will shake heaven. Second, sincere faith. Sincere faith does not necessarily mean big faith. But it was sincere. Doesn't necessarily mean that you had the faith of Elijah or faith of so and so big person. But is the little faith that you have sincere? You have to learn to ignore your neighbor. If you are distracted by believers, how are you going to pray in your office? If you are distracted by your brother and sister praying, they're not even playing, uh, what do you call, cards. I can understand if you went into a pub and said, ah, there's too many demons in this house, I can't pray. You should be praying there more than anywhere else, but that's another story. But why, what were you doing in the pub in the first place anyway? Let's... <laughs> I understand if you say that it's hard to pray in a mall, but hey, if you can't pray inside a church when a whole group of people are praying, then something is really wrong in the way you're praying. We must unlearn how we've learned to pray as kids. You have to find that broken place. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Find that place of brokenness. Many of our prayers are surface level. We must find that brokenness inside our heart. You have to pause. You know, let me give you an example. We can just say, oh God, thank you Lord for this wonderful day. This is a beautiful day. Oh Lord, thank you. The winter is over and we declare. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. God, do that. Yes, you are able. The word says that you're able. We thank you. Wonderful. Nice, cute, beautiful, right? Then there is a moment where you completely pause and go into the most deepest place and connect with God. That is the point where your heart is connected with the deepest part of God's heart. That is when the tears flow. That is when you humble yourself. That is when you just become like a little kid. Little kids are quick to tears. Unless we pray like little children, a prayer is not reaching the ears of heaven. We must become like little children to go into the kingdom of God. Little kids, you don't need to have flamboyant prayers. Pray like, just cry out, Dada. Just by saying, Daddy. Just by calling. You know, there are times when I have said not one more sentence, but just call his name, Father. Jesus. And you can feel your prayer going like a laser beam penetrating every demonic realm and heavenly principalities and every forces it will invade heaven.